good. So I've been busy as hell on getting the uh, CNC programming done to do all of our engines and the cylinder head stuff. The uh, I want to do a video to kind of explain some differences between the engine packages because the price does get, uh, I guess, you know, quite a bit more expensive the higher up you get. So I guess we'll start on a new addition to our line of packages is the, the closed deck block. Let's move it up so we look at it. So the the biggest issue with producing a lot of power on the uh, the OEM block construction is um, bore flex. So the more power you make, there's a, a cylinder pressure increases, the cylinder pressure deforms the bore. Um, and another issue with these blocks is the sleeve doesn't come all the way to the top of the, the deck, or the, the bore. So if you look in here, it's basically pure aluminum right there, till right there. So you'll cut down for a bit before you even touch like an iron sleeve. So a part of the bore is aluminum. And we all know that aluminum is quite a bit softer than an iron. So you'll normally see the sleeve crack right at the top of the bore and then it will crack down through the iron. But basically the bore is just moving a ton. To combat that, we, in the very beginning, a couple years ago, we tried an epoxy. So we'd fill the coolant jacket up with salt, basically, and then we would pour an epoxy in, basically, where the coolant jacket is, where we've now inserted aluminum, let it cure for like a week, and then we would drill holes in it, to basically allow the coolant to pass into the cylinder head and then back into the block and out the block. But um, with this procedure, it's, it's better in a lot of ways, but it also requires us to machine the bores to a bigger size afterwards. So these are basically an extremely close fit so much that we do heat the block up a little bit to get the sleeve to go into the block. Um, we basically cut a, a, an ed, a ledge for the insert to sit on, which would be like this, and then we pound these in. We heat them up and pound them in, and then machine off all the excess stuff, and then we drill the holes, machine the, the linking um, coolant port, I guess. This allows us to space the drill, uh, the, the drill holes out a little bit and still get a lot of water in each transfer port on the head gasket. So we drill it, link the ports, and then we deck it flat. But when we do that, the bore actually is changed size. So everything from the middle of the bore down is the same size as a factory bore, but because of the added pressure and strength we added in the top of the bore, um, it deforms it quite a bit, about five thousandths of an inch. You'll see that the bore's straight and then it, gets, it goes like this at the top. So all these blocks will go to 20 over as a minimum. Um, some guys want to go to 75, which I'm okay with 75 bore on this combination. Um, I guess 74 and a half has just kind of been the go-to that we've used forever. So this block is going to be our new V2, basically. Um, the V1 will be just like a basic rebuild with a piston upgrade. V2 will be the same engine internal pop, like the engine uh, components will be the same in the V2 as what they currently are with the sleeve. Um, we're gonna run the custom-made 625 nine millimeter head studs with these. We've had great luck running quite a bit of boost with that stud and uh, you know not needing to go crazy and uh, put bigger head studs in it. Makes it easier for head gaskets. It makes it easier to not need to machine the cylinder head to fit a bigger stud into it. 
So that's kind of the basis of the V2. The V3 used to be the billet girl sleeve lock, but now the V3 is basically focused on doing a sleeve. So now we're done with this closed deck. Put it back. So V3 is, this is the MID closed deck. Um, that is basically this sleeve here. So the same idea is, is put into the construction of the sleeves that we use to insert into the block. So excess cylinder pressure, a lot of powers added, all that cylinder pressure is mostly contained in the top of the bore. So you can see this was our original design. This was what we used forever since the beginning, which we added a lot of flange thickness and a lot of support at the top of the bore for when we're making a lot of power. This is still used today in all of our big power setups. The MID sleeve's kind of new and we actually haven't like put it in any of our big power stuff, but the idea is the same and it's still a Darden sleeve. So we will be sleeving with these still and then we have this as an, like an upgrade option. As you can see, the main difference is the flange thickness, I would consider this the flange and this the flange thickness is increased. And then these have the support to try to prevent the sleeve from rocking, um, which we didn't see as big of a problem. The, the one issue that we do see with this is um, because they added the flange, this, th let's just say this one would sit here. The coolant port, um, the way the water works is the water comes into the block, transfers into the cylinder head, and it goes back into the block. Well, this one is linked. So we have a solution to block off the water to force it all through the cylinder head. But with this design, we would keep the factory divider and everything would be good. We do step deck these. Every one that we do is step decked. The same with these to add some cylinder head clamping. Um, so the, the sleeve will actually protrude from the deck surface a reasonable number. The number can move around a little bit, but um, generally like two thousandths of an inch is you know, kind of where we're going. So this is gonna be our V3. Um, we can run these and it'll be an option to go to an upgraded stud if you wanna go that route. Um, but we're still gonna uh, push these with the custom A625 stuff. And then obviously the V4 engine, the new V4, will be um, closed deck or this sleeve, but most likely the MID sleeve with the billet girdle. And then the V5 is gonna be our billet block. But we're gonna move over to the, uh, the cylinder head stuff. So our, our CNC, is you know the the i'd say the main reason we got it is because of how well it can handle doing um or how quick we can get from a digitized like digitizing to master cam from master cam back in the machine and start porting so this was the original head we ported and did all of our development on um this head was almost 200 CFM on the intake, and I think it was 170, 180 CFM on the exhaust, that 350 lift. We put this cylinder head in the machine, digitized the ports, so basically used a probe and probed a bunch of uh, plane circles. We digitized the combustion chamber, put it in master cam, cleaned it up a little bit, made tool pass, and then we basically created the cylinder head. So this one has got a valve job done to it, so it's one millimeter over valve. Some other cool things that we did um, is we took the we took the bore 
found out where the head gasket sits, basically found out where the center of the bore should be, and then put it in the master cam as the center of the bore should be here, because these cylinder heads have quite a bit of core shift. You'd be surprised how much core shift they have. So you can actually see the core shift here. So the center of the bore, it's cutting a perfect center, and then we limit the size of the, the bore to 74 and a half. So the, the, the combustion chamber at any point will be no bigger than a diameter of 74 and a half. It didn't cut here much, but it really cut over here. So it centered, it centered the combustion chamber, which you know doesn't like look very appealing, I guess, but you know it's done proper. So the same thing goes here. So this head has been ported, but you can see the core shift isn't as bad on this one. It cut a lot of here. It cut a lot more here than on this cylinder head, and then basically the same amount on the right side of this one. So we're gonna offer these in two versions. I wrote the program to cut the factory guides, which will save you guys money. And the steel guide seems to work just fine. You can do the V3 Plus where we do the, uh, where we put our bronze guides in them. Um, it just adds a little bit of money in like a guide install, I guess. So we also um, rough the intake port a little bit more. I don't know if you can see that. The intake port is roughed more than the exhaust port. But this head, we are going to do some like back-to-back -back testing on the 22. Um, we're gonna basically put, we're gonna get the stock engine and clutching happy and then we're going to just put camshafts in it and then we're going to swap the cylinder head and camshafts into it and dyno it back to back. So the one thing that, you know, these cylinder head packages with combustion chamber work would be better in, in some sense, it would be better to do it with, uh, with an engine build because we do remove a little bit of material out of the combustion chamber, so it would drop your compression a little bit. But basically, uh, we got our engine packages dialed in. Um, I'm really excited to test these uh, closed deck blocks. I think that's the best way to do it, support the top of the bore and actually put press on the cylinder. If you don't have to machine it afterwards, that basically the bore can still flex and that's what we don't want. So uh, in, that, in that situation there, I think that's the best way to do it. And obviously moving up in power, you need even more support. This was our original design. This worked really well. And then like the full blown, full power Darton ductile iron sleeve is there. So the, a lot of stuff is changing. We're trying to make it as affordable as possible for people. Um, doing some things like keeping the steel guides in here. Um, we could do a lot of the work in-house now, which is huge. Another thing, we have a vapor hone now. So we can take heads that have had miles on them and dirt basically staining the aluminum and uh, we can make them look like rather new. So this head, stay low. So this head was vapor hung. I mean, it actually looks better than new. We do the combustion chambers. We don't go too crazy because we're gonna deck that anyway. But combustion chambers are done. The head looks really, really good. So all the cylinder heads will go through this process. The blocks will be a uh, by request. The block is quite a bit more work to do. But we're also gonna have these on the shelf. So if you guys wanna order quickly or need something quick, we will have them basically built 
maybe weighting a couple of components depending on which way you want to go. But the plan was to make this happen really quick. Um, situations come up where you need stuff quick and we want to facilitate that with, um, with having stuff in stock. So thanks for watching and keep an eye on the website for when the changes happen.